This is Coombe Cassis for IFL TV in association with Macklin's Gym Marbella. With me, I've got soon to be making his uh, professional boxing debut uh, at York Hall, uh, Tommy Sweet T. Jacobs. How are you, Tommy? I'm good, thanks, Coogan. Thanks for having me back. That's all right. Uh, how long has it been? Roughly about a year since we last spoke? Yeah, it must have been approaching a year now, I'd imagine. It's uh, quite a while ago, but I'm still getting quite good feedback from it even now. Uh, so I'm happy to be back and have a nice little chat with you. Hopefully get the same feedback again. Obviously when we first spoke it was uh, a completely different story to how it is now. Um, you were unsure whether you were going to be able to obtain a licence to box uh, due to various reasons. But what has happened in that, in that last year, Tommy? Right, in the last year, obviously I've um, been training hard the whole time. But I have applied to the British Boxing Board of Control to get my professional boxer's licence. Um, took quite some time to get an answer. It had to go through the right channels, obviously southern area first. Then it got sent to the head of the board. Didn't get a decision made, went back to the southern area as far as I know. And then it got denied. Reason being my criminal record and that I've been in prison. Um, subsequently... I've had to get a foreign licence, I've got a Maltese licence and I'll be making my debut on the March the 11th for your call. Obviously, the British Border Control would you know, look at each case uh, regarding licences, uh, not just yours, but obviously every, every boxer that sort of uh, has a reason why it could be declined, they look at it in their own individual cases. But do you feel, though, that the board were unfair to deny you a licence, the British one? Um, I wouldn't say they're unfair. Obviously, they have their rules and regulations which they've got to stick to. Um, it's the governing body in this country, or the main governing body in this country, so I've got to respect their decision. And hopefully in time, things may change, laws change, rules change, and uh, they may grant me one in the future. Did they give you spe specific <coughs> reasons to why it was, uh, like I said, they wouldn't grant you a licence and it was, was it specifically to do with uh, the fact that you spent time in prison? Um, yeah, the, the actual reason they gave is because I'm still under licence with probation. So whilst I'm still under licence or if anyone else is under licence in theory or any type of court order, then you can't have a British boxing licence. So obviously, it must have been, excuse my French, a bit of a kick in the nuts uh, for that. But then there are sort of other avenues you can go, which you have gone down. And you're not the first. Uh, there are quite a, a number of boxers that have had British licences in the past that have gone down this route that you're going down. Uh, but it means that you're able to box as a professional under the Maltese licence. Yeah, that's right. Obviously... It's not the route I wanted to take. It's not the desired route. Do you know what I mean? I wanted to start off, win a Southern Area title, English title, British title, and so on. Obviously, now I've got to go a different route, but they, it's still a route. My, I'm still a professional boxer. My ranking points are still going to be the same. It's still going on box rec. There's plenty of other routes I can go down. I can't go the British route, which I wanted, but there's other avenues, the WBO and things like that, are still open with Maltese licence, which... I mean, I'm I'm looking far beyond British titles anyway, so that would have been just a lovely stepping stone and something to put on the mantelpiece for the, the future. Obviously, the news that you have got a date for your uh, first professional fight, is it March the... March the 11th. March the 11th, um, at, at your call as well. Um, it must have been sort of a relief to sort of have that date after the sort of year that you have been through, you know, trying to battle various, you know, causes uh, that have been against yourself? Yeah, do you know what? It's been so frustrating because, like I say, the time it took was so long. Originally, once the forms had been submitted and sent off, it went to the southern area. They took quite a while before even getting back to us and saying that they hadn't made a decision. It's then gone above straight up to the head of the board. Um, that then took 
forever or what seemed like forever again. It was probably only a few weeks. After that, it went back down to the southern area, I believe. And then um, I finally got a call from Steve Goodwin, who was acting as my manager. And uh, he said, look, you're going to get a letter in the post in a few days saying your licence application has been denied. So it, it, was, it was a kick in the balls. It was frustrating time. But once I'd finally got the decision, at least I could move on and chase another avenue and get the ball rolling with something else and finally got a date sorted, which I can't wait for. Tommy, I, I know you watched an interview I did uh, not too long ago, about four or five months ago, with uh, Richard Towers, um, who's made no secret of his past and the, the fact that he's sort of spent uh, some time in prison and he gave you some sort of words of encouragement, which which must have, must have been like music to your ears, listening to that from Richard Towers. Oh, definitely. It was, it was music to my ears. Richard, uh, I spoke to him quite a bit on Twitter and various other social medias, and he actually spent longer in prison than myself. So it is music to my ears because he's, he's doing well at the moment. Good luck in his next fight as well. He's got coming up. But it just shows that there is light at the end of the tunnel eventually. Do you know what I mean? I've... I want to just be a pro boxer, and I finally am now, and hopefully soon we can start moving things in the right direction and start winning decent titles, work my way up to the major titles and eventually get to my potential. I mean, as you get more fights, and you know, I hope you do sort of get a, a series of successive fights, um, there will be sort of a stigma attached to you. Um, like there, there probably was with Richard Towers at some point, um, and... I'm not saying it's forgotten about, but, you know, people uh, move on from, from things and sort of realise that people need to be given second chances, etc. But is that ex whole ex-con thing something that you'll be wanting to sort of eliminate and not be remembered for that, but remembered for your performances inside the ring? Well, yeah, definitely. Obviously, it's a massive part of my life. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's happened. I can't shy away from it. So... Like I've I've got people messaging me and writing to me and talking to me all the time about doing film scripts and documentaries on the turnaround of myself, obviously, like a Cinderella Man type story. So it's gone from bad to good and it's only going to get better. It is a crap time in my life, but I've moved on from it. Hopefully everyone else will be able to move on from it as well. And I don't mind if, if people want to remember it, I don't mind, but... Do you know I mean, one bad thing in your life doesn't define the person you are, and hopefully my career will be what people remember in the end. I mean, even in professional boxing today, there's, you know, there's countless stories of boxers that have been involved in so many unrelated boxing incidents. Um, look, but like I said, it, you get to a certain level where people are probably a little bit more forgiving if you know if. You know, you've got a, a, an ex-world champion or, you know, an ex-British champion or something, people, and you've built up a boxing career, they're kind of more willing to sort of forget about that quicker than most. But it's that initial starting period for you to get yourself into the ring and, like I said, show people what you're capable of. Definitely, yeah. I've I've uh, made a bit of a rod for my own back. I, I mucked up. Like, like you say, there's some other people that have done out there, already had a half-decent career, then made the mistakes. People are already willing to forgive because they know the person. No one knows me yet. Hopefully once everyone sees what I'm like, then people will let me move on from it like I have and just concentrate on the boxing because there's so many success stories. I know obviously not as many in this country, but the likes of Bernard Hopkins and things like that do lengthy prison sentences, come out, turn to boxing, and that's, that becomes their life. And that's all it is with me. Boxing is my life at the moment. And... Uh, it's going to be proved very shortly. Tommy, obviously, um, you're sort of in camp at the moment. Talk to me a little bit about who you've been sparring, where you've been sparring. Um, have you got an opponent um, for the 11th of March? What weight you'd be fighting at? Yeah, I'm fighting a middleweight. Doing a really strong camp at the moment. Um, training at a champion's gym down in Colchester. We've got some good boys down there. There's, there's another five pros down there two of which from my former amateur club. I've got John Wheatley, who's 1-0 and at the moment. Uh, Ryan Frost, who makes his debut a week before me in Norwich, along with Alan Ratib. And uh, 
Joe Hearn's also fighting on that one. He's 5-0 and with three knockouts. We mix it up with sparring all the time. And we're so strong. We've got, obviously, quite a, a young gym in the fact of Joe's the most experienced there. But we're all fit as a fiddle. And everyone's pushing each other. Another lad, Tom McGinley, just turned over with us in the same gym as well. And we've got six of us there all competing to be number one in the gym at the time. Plus a load of other people that train there. And it is just a really, really strong camp. We're, we're all in the gym at R4 in the morning. None of us have got massive sponsorship deals. So we'll, we'll be training at R4 in the morning, then going to work, then training in the evening, then weekends. And it is a blinding camp. Like I say, fighting at middleweight. Uh, my opponent is a, a former world kickboxing champion. His name's Ryan Lyle. He's from Scotland. And he's in for a bit of our timing, three and a half weeks. I, I feel a bit sorry for the geezer, if I'm honest. Confident talk. Well, he's... Um, don't get me wrong, He's. I, I don't care who's put in front of me, I'm going to beat him. I've got utmost respect for whoever's in there. But... Uh, I'm I'm aware of my own abilities and I've had a good strong camp and it's it's getting better and better week by week. I'm feeling stronger, fitter, faster, sharper. And the fact that he's Scottish brings a nice little mix to it as well. Do you know what I mean? I'm boxing at the home of British boxing. It's got um the bitterest rivalry in sporting history, probably England versus Scotland. And I used to live up there. So do you know what I mean he he's got a a lot of answering to do. I lived up there in Euro 96 when Gaza scored that goal. I lived up there when Braveheart came out in the cinemas. I I got a lot of stick. Do you know what I mean? I was, I was the only English geezer in my school apart from my brothers. And we had to fight our way out of school every day just because just of Gaza and Braveheart. So he's in for a hard time. When I bring my army of fans to your call, and he's uh, going to be going back home as quickly as possible. So realistically, obviously, you know, we touched on the situation regarding uh, the license and not being able to sort of go the, the conventional route that you would like to have gone down. But realistically, what can you achieve, do you believe? Um, I, I know I'm going to win world titles, no doubt about it. W whatever route I have to take, I don't know. How long it takes to get there, I don't know. Obviously, I, there's other licences that I can also get. Um, Ian Weaver, for example, who's boxing on the same card as me, used to be on the GB squad. He's uh, got a Nevada State Commission licence. So there, there's ways and means, and I'm sure that once I start winning and beating everyone in front of me, the doors will open for me and opportunities will come because I'm willing to try hard enough, so I'm sure someone will be willing to open the door for me at some point. By the time you sort of reach a certain amount of fights, I think... Golovkin would have retired anyway, Tommy, so I won't worry about him too much. He's going to have to. He's, uh, he's He'll be the unfortunate one at the end of the list, otherwise. Whoever's in the way is getting beat, whoever they are, however good they are. No one's going to train as hard as me and be as well prepared as me. Well, like I said, you know, we caught up a, a year ago, first of all, and um, like I said, it's been a frustrating, but sort of a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel for yourself, so I'm glad that there is some sort of positive news that you will sort of make your professional debut come March the 11th. So, you know, we look forward to that and sort of following your career and, you know, just seeing how people react to you. And like I said, hopefully you're being judged for your performances inside of the ring rather than, you know, things that may or may not have happened, shall we say, in the past. Yeah, that's that's what I'm hoping. Do you know what I mean? I've got a brilliant following back down my way. I've got quite a lot of support who are going to be coming to support me every time. I've got a couple of good sponsors in Core Construction and Esca Recruitment who helped me out, jumping, paid for my medicals, Coil where I work for, give me a bit of time off work when I need to do extra training, things like that, and they look right after me. And I've I've got a lot, a lot of people that are getting behind me. I'm in the local press at home and every, everyone's behind me. Everyone at home that knows me has forgotten about the bad points and they're just looking forward to a prosperous career. And I can't wait to get it started. All right, Tommy. Well, listen, thank you very much for talking to uh, IFL TV. And like I said, uh, I believe that weekend is uh, we'll be in Liverpool for uh, Flanagan Matthews. But I'm sure we'll have a chance to sort of catch up after, uh, after that weekend to uh, see how you got on. 
yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I'd love that. Also, if you get a chance to make it Saturday, I'm going to be training in Harwich doing a bit of an open training session because I've got so many people that want to come and watch me train. So at the moment, it's only Harwich. Next year, probably Lakeside, I'll be to Essex, what Carl Frampton is to Belfast, and I'll have everyone there watching me. But thank you for your time tonight. I'm going to have to shoot because uh, my missus' waters have broken about an hour and a half ago, so I need to get home and become a father. All right, I was very well aware of that by uh, our friends here. So, um, like I said, best of luck with that as well. Hopefully everything may be safe and healthy. And um, like I said, you'll uh, hopefully have a couple of things to sort of uh, celebrate over the next month. Definitely. And uh, next time you see me, I'll have a little baby and I'll be one and oh. We'll look forward to it. Tommy Jacobs, thank you very much for talking to IFL TV. And we'll catch up with you soon. Lovely. Thank you, Cougar.